for is on the law of sines and law of cosines. Okay, so previously you learned something called SOHCAHTOA. And SOHCAHTOA, um, which is your trig ratios, could only be used um, when you had right triangles. So the question is, like, what, what do we do when we don't have right triangles? Can we still find all the side lengths and all the angle, length, uh, angle measurements and so on? And yes, we can. So there's two methods that we're going to use. So the first one is called the law of sines. And it says in any triangle, ABC, the sine of angle A divided by little a is equal to the sine of angle B over little b, which is equal to the sine of angle C over little c. So you could use just two of these together, like just those two, or just these two, or just these two. We don't use all three all at once. And with any proportion, know that you can also flip them over. So you could take the reciprocal of all of those. So I could also say little a over sine of angle a equals little b over sine of angle b, and so on. Um, so you can always use the reciprocal if that's easier for you. But typically I use it like this. So the law of sines is used whenever we have like angle, angle, side, or we have side, side, angle. So if we have two angles and then the side, or if we have two sides and then an angle. So if you remember earlier in the year, this was the bad one. This is when we could say that triangles were not congruent to each other. Um, so this one's obviously going to cause us some problems with law of sines as well, because you can't always say that there's only one triangle with that. So we'll talk about um, what's called the ambiguous case in a little bit. Okay, so it says if we have angle A, B, C, or if we have angle A, it's 115, angle B is 27, and little a is 45, find the other angle measures and side lengths. So you could try to accurately sketch this out if you want to and be like, okay, I have my obtuse angle A, and then I have some B that's 27, and then across from big A, remember, across from big A is little a. So little a is 45. Okay, so if you notice, we have an angle, another angle, and then a side. Okay, so this is one that we can use the law of sines on. And basically what I tell my students is don't like sweat it when you talk about like angle, side, angle, 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 side. Which one can we use when? Really, you kind of go through a process. You try SOHCAHTOA first, and in this case, SOHCAHTOA doesn't work. We don't have a right angle. And then you immediately go to law of sines. So you start setting it up, and you're like, okay, well, I have sine of angle A, so sine of 115 over little a is 45. And then you can say sine of angle B, well, that's 27, over little b, which we don't know. So as long as you only have one unknown, you're good to go. You can solve this out. So we start cross multiplying. So we're like, okay, I have sine of 115 degrees times b equals 45 times the sine of 27. So just make sure your calculator is in degree mode, and we go ahead and multiply these out. So check these numbers along with me to make sure you're in the right mode. So let's do the 45 times sine of 27. So 45 times sine of 27, you should get like 20.4296, something like that. And then we still have our sine of 115 divided uh, times b. So now we're going to divide by sine of 115. Well, you can just take divided by, so it takes that answer that you had already, and you divide by sine of 115. And then in the end, I want you to round to three decimals. So three decimals is pretty common in like pre-calc, even calc, and so on. So we're going to get 22.542. So that's the length for B. Okay, so in this case, it's saying find all the other angle measures and the side lengths. So sometimes I kind of organize my information. And this is where people always groan. They're like, oh, I don't want to write this out. But it does save you time in the long run, trust me. So we have 115, we had angle B was 27, we had little a was 45, those were the originals. We just found little b was 22.542. We can get big C because we know that we have to total to be 180 degrees, right? So I'm going to add the 115 to the 27, so I get 142, and I do 180 minus 142. So I'm left with 38, so I got that one, and then now I need little c. Well, we can't just do like a squared plus b squared equals c squared, the Pythagorean theorem, because again, we don't have a right triangle, so don't do that. So in this case, we're going to have to do law of sines again. So no groaning, it's not that bad. So we're going to do sine of 38 degrees divided by little c, and then we go back to a or b. Now personally, I've told you, told you this before, I never use something that I've solved along the way. If I can go back to other numbers, I'm going to use those other numbers. So the, the numbers that I started with were the, the a, b, and little a. So I'm going to go back to those a's. So I'm going to do sine of 115 
divided by little h, which is 45. I don't want to use the 22.542 because A, I rounded, right? And you're creating the bridges and so on. Uh, we want you to have nice answers, nice um, clean answers where we haven't rounded in between. Okay, so I'm doing 45 times sine of 38 on my calculator. So I get 27.7. Do several decimals. Again, I'm keeping this number in my calculator, just like we did yesterday. And then I'm dividing by sine of 115. So when I do, I get C is equal to 30.569. So that's the last thing, so 30.569. So now we know that we found everything because we have this nice little thing right there. Make your teacher happy by circling all your answers. You have everything all organized. Look at that. Isn't that so nice? All right, so the next one. So it says Evan wants to measure the height of a tree. He walks exactly 100 feet from the base of the tree, and he looks up. So we're 100 feet away. The angle from the ground to the top of the tree is 33 degrees. So this angle to the top is 33 degrees. However, this particular tree grows at an angle of 83 degrees with respect to the ground rather than vertically 90 degrees. So we're growing kind of slanted. So here's our tree. And this angle right here is 83 degrees. So how tall is the tree? So let's find h, this height. And in this case, we're doing the height. Oops. Oops, it ends like right there. Okay. So we don't have a right triangle. So again, go through the process. Can't do Sokotoa, so let's try law of sines. So we have our 83 degrees. So it looks like we could say like sine of 83 degrees, but then we're stuck because we don't know what this is over here. Okay, so it's like, oh, can't do sine of 83 degrees then. Let's go to sine of... 33. So we're like, oh, sine of 33 over h. Well, that's good, but that's our unknown. So we need another angle. We need sine of something over 100. And the question is, well, what's this? Well, let's look at our triangle, right? We have 83 and we have 33. So we can find this other angle measurement. All we have to do is just add 83 to 33, right? 83 plus 33 is 116, and then subtract from 180. So we get that this is 64 degrees, so we're good. We have sine of 64 degrees. Now we can cross multiply. So we're going to do sine of 64 times h equals 100 times sine of 33. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that sine of 64 over. So I can put this all in my calculator at once. So I'm doing 100 sine of 33 divided by sine of 64. So when I do, I get h is equal to 60.597. So this is in feet. That's how tall the tree is. OK, so let's talk about the weird one. So these examples that we did so far were all angle, angle, side. We had two angles, and we had a side, and then we could find it. So that last one was actually technically angle, side, angle, but we made it into this angle, angle, side form, right? So we're good. We got it. So it says there's when we have angle, angle, side, there is always exactly one triangle that satisfies the given information. However, in the side-side angle, right, the bad word spelled backwards, um, there may be one, two, or no triangles that satisfy this information. This is called the ambiguous case. So if you have side-side angle and you solve for an angle, you must do 180 minus the angle for a second possible um, angle measurement. So I'm going to do an example of this. It's kind of long. Bear with me. You can do this, I promise. So here's the idea. If I have 45 degrees and I have this side, which is 6, and I have another side, which is 5. This side right here could swing over. So imagine a stick that has like a hinge on it, and we're swinging it to the other side. It could go over here. Right? Do you guys see how this little triangle right here is a isosceles triangle? Right? We could form a triangle there where we swing it over. This still has the same measurements. It's still 45 degrees, 6, and then 5. This is also 45 degrees, 6, and 5. But these are two totally different triangles. So one is very big, one is very small. This last angle here is obtuse. The last angle here is acute. Okay, and these two angles, this obtuse and acute angle, end up being um, supplementary. So if this one was like 35, this one would be the rest of the 180. It would be 145. Okay, now in this case, though, think about it. I should have thought about this number. I can't have 45 and 145 in the same triangle, right? So let's say it was 100. 
So if this obtuse angle is 100, then this other one is going to be 80 then. Okay? So we got to figure this out. We got to figure out when this happens, when there's only one answer like before, or if there's these two possible triangles that can happen. And sometimes there's no triangle at all. So in this first example, it says, show that there's no triangle where this is true. So if we have 54 degrees, and then across from it, we have 5, and then B and A, it doesn't matter where we put them, B is 8. Okay? So we're going to do sine of 54 over 5 equals sine of angle B over 8. Okay? And you don't have to draw this out. You could just set it up using sine of angle C over little c equals and so on. So we do 8 times sine of 54 equals 5 times sine of angle B. So when I divide by 5, I get sine of angle B is equal to 1.2944. So now you learned last time that if I want to get rid of this sine, I do inverse sine, right? So there's a button on your calculator that looks like this, sine to the negative 1. Okay, so we're going to do inverse sine. So it's going to look like sine to the negative 1 of 1 1.2944. And when you do that on your calculator, my calculator says error. And it says domain. All right, so in pre-calculus, you're going to learn that sine and cosine are always, like, smaller than 1. I think I mentioned that yesterday, right? Sine and cosine are always smaller than 1 because it's, like, opposite over hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always bigger. So in this case, we had sine of b was equal to something that was bigger than 1. That's not possible. It doesn't work. Okay, so this is now an error. Okay, so what this means is there is no possible triangle with these measurements. So you guys should pause it, and you should play around with this. This is actually a good, good thing to try. If you try to use your protractor and you make out a 54 degrees, and then let's say you have um, 8 here, and then I want a 5. The 5 is too small. It can't possibly swing, no matter where you swing it here, it can't possibly swing to connect with this line. Okay, so that's what's happening. And you can have that 8 where we have it there, or you could have it on this other side. So if you had 8 along the bottom, and then you only had 5, 5 isn't possibly long enough. It doesn't matter how long this other line is. It's not going to match up. So it's never going to meet this other line over here. And that's the issue. That's why you can have no possible triangle with these measurements. Okay, so let's try another one. So it says, solve the triangle ABC when A is 4.8, B is 6, and A is 28. So you don't have to sketch it out, but you have sine of angle A all over little a equals sine of angle B over little b. And we start cross multiplying. So we're like, okay, I have 6 sine of 28 equals 4.8 sine of B. And I divide by that 4.8, so I'm going to get 6 times sine of 28 divided by 4.8. And then I do my inverse sine. So right now I have sine of angle B equals 0.5868. So when I do my inverse sine, I get B is equal to 35.933. Okay, so this is a weird one. Whenever you are solving for the angle first, that means that you had angle side side. You had the bad word. Okay, and you can sketch it out if you want to. A, B, C. You had A, little a was 4.8. Angle A was 28. Little b was 6. Do you guys see how we have an angle? We have a side and then a side. So we write it as side side angle. So I'm going to write B where. So we found an angle first. This will always happen when you have side side angle. You always find that angle first. See if there is a second triangle. So see if there's a second triangle that can have these original sides. So what we do is we, we talk about B2. So we're going to call this B1, the original one B1, and we're going to do B2, which is 180 minus whatever B1 was. So I'm going to do 180 minus that 35.933. So when I do, I get 144.067. So could that work with our original measurements? Well, we had A was 28, we had 4.8, we had 6. So could we have B as 144.067? So we just want to make sure that the angles are okay. 
So if you have 28 and you have 144.067, think about it, is that too big? Well, let's add 28 to 144. When we do, 144.067 added to 28 gives me 172.067. There is still enough room. If I do 180 minus, I can still get 7.933 for that last angle. There's still enough room. It still works as a triangle. It's a triangle with a tiny, tiny angle for angle C, but it works. So that's where we have two answers. So this is where I line it up. As much as you guys love this, I know you do. So we do A1, B1, C1, and then A1, B1, C1. And then we do twos. So exciting. I know you guys are just loving this. So we have a total of 12 different things to find. So it seems a little overwhelming at first, but remember you already had three things originally, and that works for both triangles. So we have 28 degrees, well we also have 28 degrees there. We had little a was 4.8, we also have 4.8 here. And we have um, little b was 6. So we're good. So we really only have to find six things. And if you notice, b1 we found right away, 35.933. And the second possibility for b was that 144.067. So then the c1 and c2, the big c's are not hard to find. So I found that c2 was 7.933. Well, C1, I add 28 to 35.933, and then I subtract from 180, so I get 116.067. So there's really only one last step here, and it's to find the C1 and the C2. Okay, so that's really all we need to find. And so how do we do that? We do it again with law of sines. So I'm going to set it up, and I'm going to take those ones I had originally, sine of 28 over 4.8, and now I'm going to do the Cs. So I'm going to do sine of 116.067, divided by little c, and then I'm going to do the second one as well, so I'm going to call that little c1. So I'm going to do sine of 28 over 4.8, and then I'm going to do the other c, which is 7.933, divided by c2, and I'm going to solve both of these equations. So a lot of this I will just do on my calculator, so I'm going to do sine of 116.067 times 4.8, I take that answer, I divide by sine of 28, that gets me c1 is 9.184, so you can pause it and try it if you need to. So 4.8 times sine of 7.933 divided by sine of 28. So the other C, I get 1.411. Whoops, that's a little messy. And then we know we're good to go. We found all 12 things. Look at you. You're just masters at this. All right, so same idea on this one. So it says find all the measurements of triangle ABC when A is equal to 6, B is equal to 7, and A is equal to 30. So again, it's one that has one angle and two sides. So it's an angle side side one. Um, so this could have two answers, one answer, or no answers. Okay, so we're going to say sine of 30 over 6 equals sine of angle B over 7. So I'm finding that angle first. So I do 7 multiplied by sine of 30 and then divide by 6. I do inverse sine, so I had inverse sine of 0.583 repeating on my calculator equals B. So I got B was equal to 35.685. So now we see if there's a second B. So I'm going to do 180 minus that. I get 144.315. And I see if that's cool with my original A. So if I have those two angles in the same triangle, is it too much? So if I add those together, I get 174 or something. So I still have room for a third angle. That's what you're checking. Now if this had been 154.315, 154 plus 30 is too big, I get 184. There's no room for a third triangle because a triangle only adds up to be 180 degrees. So you can't have like a negative angle for the third angle. So if that was 154, you would just cross it out. But in this case, 144 works. So that's where we set it up. So we have our ABC, 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 ABC. You could also just write first triangle above it and second triangle above it. And we start filling in all of our things. So we have angle A is 30. So the originals go for both. Um, little A was 6. 
little b was 7. So those are all of our originals. Now we just found b1 and b2, so b1 is 35.685, b2 was 144.315. So the triangles have to add up to be 180 degrees. So if I add that 30 to the 144, I have 174 something. So I subtract and I get this last angle is 5.685, so C2. And same idea on the, the first one, so I'm going to do 30 plus 35.685. And then I'm subtracting from 180, so I get 114.315. So again, now all we have are the C's. So we again set it up, so we're like, okay, sine of 30 over 6 equals sine of whatever our C was, so in this case 114.315 over C1. Okay, and we find that. So 6 times sine of 114.315 and then divided by sine of 30, we get um, C1 is 10.936. And then C2, same idea. So I'm going to have sine of 30 over 6 equals sine of angle C, which is 5.685 over little c2. And I go through the same process. So make sure you're getting the same numbers. So C2 should be 1.189. Okay, and that's everything. Okay, so if I give you guys this on your test, there will only be one. I won't make you do two. Wouldn't that be just so mean? You just have one. All right, and then the last thing we have to talk about is law of cosine. So this is a pretty easy one. Um, it's kind of a hard one to memorize, so you will have to memorize this, but it's not too difficult. So the one I always start with is this one, because it starts out kind of like the Pythagorean theorem, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. But again, it's not a right triangle, so there's something weird here. So we do minus 2 times whatever things we had here. So a times b, and then it's going to be cosine of whatever we had here, so angle C. So just make it a capital C though. So if I start out with B, it'd be B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus two A times C and then cosine of angle B. And if I start out with A, it's gonna be A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus two B times C and then cosine of angle A. So that's kind of how you memorize it. So you have to remember the biggest thing people will forget is that two, so, or they'll forget that it's a minus, they'll think it's a plus. So um, write it down a few times to make sure you memorize it. Okay, so it says the law of cosines is used whenever we have side angle side or side side side. So again, we go through this process. So we say, can I do Sokoto? No, I don't have a right angle. Can I do a law of sines? No, I'm missing something. Like maybe you're missing um, an angle, right? Then you have side side side, right? So you'd have to do law of cosines. And the only weird thing about law of cosines, so we don't have that weird ambiguous case that we had with law of sines, but is if you have side, 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 so let's say you had 8, 10, and 7 here, you have to start your equation with that 10 squared. So it'd be like 10 squared equals 8 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 8 times 7 times cosine of whatever that angle is, cosine of A. Um, so just make sure you do that. So if you have side, 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 you start with that largest side because that angle could be obtuse. And if you don't put that one first, you're not going to get an obtuse angle like you want. All right, so number one. So it says solve the triangles shown below. So in this case, we have side, angle, side. So we can't do Sokotoa. We don't have a right angle. We can't do law of sines because we started out and we're like, oh, I got a sine of 123 over, but I don't have an A, right? So, but then I don't have any other angles, so I can't do this one. So that's when we move on to our law of cosines. So the, the angle that we have is A. So that means we're going to start with little a. So it's going to be little a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of angle a, like that. And sometimes people like to put the cosine of angle a in parentheses or this whole part in parentheses. That all goes together, and I'll talk about that. All right, so I have a squared equals b is 21, so 21 squared, c is 30, and I have 2 times 21 times 30 times cosine of 123. Now in this case, you can put all of this just like it is into your calculator. So I can do 21 squared plus 30 squared minus 2 times 21 times 30 times cosine of 123, and that all works out. 
It was all numbers, so not a big deal. So we get a squared equals uh, a little bit more than 2,000. I then take the square root to get a by itself, so I have 45.025, which kind of makes sense with these numbers. Doesn't it make sense that that would be the biggest side because it's across from the biggest angle. So we're good. Okay, then from there, never use law of cosines twice. Now you can use whatever. So we can't use Sokoto, we don't have a right angle, but we can now go to law of sines. So finish with law of sines. So I'm not going to put, put you through all that torture again, but you can find, you know, your ABC, ABC. So right now you have four things. You have angle A is 123. You have all the sides. So you have little a is 45.025. Little b is um, 21 and little c is 30. So you would just have to find b and c. So you would do that by doing like sine of 123 over the 45.025. So in this case, you would have to use something you've already found before. All right, so this next one is an example of the side, side, side. So we're going to look for our largest. And that's the thing we're going to start out with. So that's little c. So I'm going to start out with c squared. So I'm going to have c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of angle c. So I have 21.9 squared equals um, 10.4 squared plus 18 squared minus 2 times 10.4 times 18 times cosine of c. Now this is where students will run into problems, so make sure you're paying a lot of attention here. This right here all goes together. So imagine you have an equation that looks, let's do a simpler one. 5 equals 4 plus 3 minus 2x. You know that you would have to combine this 5 plus 3 to get 7, but you wouldn't be able to combine the 7 minus 2x. You couldn't call that 5x, right? You would then have to take the 7 and subtract it over. It is exactly the same idea here. Here's our variable. So be really careful here. What I would probably do is I would subtract these two over to the left-hand side first, and then find this number and multiply by cosine c. So here's what I, I mean by that. So let's find our 21.9 squared. So I have like 479.61. I'm going to subtract out 10.4 squared, and I'm going to subtract out 18 squared. So when I do, so 21.9 squared minus 10.4 squared minus 18 squared, I get 47.45. I'm then going to have that negative that I had from here. And I'm going to do 2 times 10.4 times 18. So I'm going to have negative 374.4 cosine of c. Now I divide by that negative 374.4. So some people will also multiply, or they'll think that they can add it over. You can't add it over. It's being multiplied by cos cosine c by the variable. So I'm dividing by negative 374.4. So when I do, I get negative 0.1267 equals cosine of c. And then I do inverse cosine. So I get c is equal to 97.281, which is an obtuse angle. Now that you have c, you can finish using law of sines if you're trying to find all of the different things. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. I would probably like pause it, try it again, and see if you get it. Um, and then go back through and watch it again, because that's kind of a tricky thing on subtracting those items over. Um, some people have trouble with that. Okay, so that's law of sines and law of cosines. Hopefully you guys did okay with that.